Welcome, I am Veronica Mosha, and today I wanted to talk about stress and depression in children and in people in general. So um, it's obvious that we are all going through really odd times right now. It is really difficult for everybody. And even if your life is going really well and you are one of those lucky people who actually live in a spacious home and you have a backyard and you have a place to run and play and your economy has not um, changed at all because of the pandemic, even if you are in a good place, what happens is that the collective consciousness, the energy of the whole affects you as well. So most of us, I mean, I live in New York City, so obviously I live in an apartment. Um, and I am in Manhattan, I'm in the middle of New York, so when people who live here, who live in cities, we are really dependent on the energy of the city and you know, going outside, going out to restaurants and bars and concerts and events. And the fact that none of us can do any of those things now um, is taking a toll in all of us. And for some, it's a little more obvious than for others. So I would like today to give you some tips on how to deal with stress and depression. And I specialize in children. My work um, is for teens and young people and children. But quite frankly, the tips that I'm going to give you are for everybody. So you can use them for yourself, for your spouse, your child. But let's start with the children. And I want to first address a, a big and dangerous misconception, which is that people or children, and children do get depressed, uh, children are depressed for a reason. And that is not so. I mean, you don't have to have a reason to feel down or feel blue. And nowadays, it is very common to have people feel sad and blue and down. And many times they don't know why. And if you ask them, and even with me, I mean, I, I so my business, I do elopement weddings, small weddings. That's what I, that's uh, my full-time job is. And uh, quite frankly, with the pandemic, the first three, four months, it was dead. I mean, we didn't work. So that was bad. But now, this past three, four months, July, August, September, and October, we've been extremely busy. I've done so well. I tripled my income from last year. It's been really busy. So, and you know, and I live in a nice place. I have a, you know, I have a very nice environment, wonderful husband. My family is great. I mean, I had lots of things, lots of reasons to be happy and not to feel blue or down or depressed. And yet I found myself having those feelings. And the reason for it is because what I just told you, I am not alone. I am part of a whole. And we as a society, we as a people, and it's not even just a society, it's mankind. Go anywhere. I mean, you can go to Europe, South America, you name it, and you're going to find very similar situations. Everyone is asked to be inside, and people are very scared, some more than others. Some people are taking this really, really to heart, and um, they're very afraid. And that affects you. It will affect your mood. And again, I think I, I derail from the kids, but if you have a child, and let's forget about the pandemic now for a minute, and if you have a child who tends to be sad or depressed, um, and I'm sure you're one of those parents, you get really worried and you send them to a therapist to see what happens and see if they can help them. My take on it, my theory is that your child is probably very, very empathic and very uh, intuitive and perceptive and sensitive. So if you have a sensitive child, and it's my opinion that all children are, so from the moment, you know, we are born and you're toddlers and babies until you are about 17 years old at least, and some people still, I mean, I remain an empath for my entire life. What happens around me really affects me. And I learned this late in life. In the beginning, I thought, you know, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? Why am I moody? Why am I up and down? And, and I thought, you know, I was bipolar or something, which I'm not. 
um, it took me a while to realize that what was happening around me, the, the problems of other people would actually, I would internalize them and it would affect me. It would affect my, my mood. Sometimes I would just be sad and it wasn't for anything that happened to me. Um, so this is something for you to think about. Um, you know your child, you see them every day. If you find them to be a little off or if they have that tendency, don't run to the therapist. There's a good chance that what is happening to them is that they're extra sensitive. And the way you treat that is different from the way you treat other things. Um, you don't need to go to a therapist. I recommend you start using meditations and, and some of this exercises that I'm going to teach you today. So if you're ready, here are some uh, quick fixes for depression, anxiety, anger, or stress. Okay, all of these fixes are super easy and so much fun to do. And I invite you to please give it a shot, try it, even if you're not depressed, even if you don't think you need it. These are important things that everybody should be doing in a regular basis. So the first one is shaking and moving. We know this. I don't have to tell you dancing, moving, shaking, doing sports. Um, I usually recommend doing something ludic, something fun. So if we were in normal times, I would recommend a child or a young person, even an old person, uh, to do some kind of... Um, competitive sport or a team sport, right? Like playing soccer or volleyball or um, hockey or something like that. Uh, because that stimulates a bunch of different things in the brain, in the mind, in the body and the spirit. Uh, when you're participating in a sport, uh, you're with other people, you are um, stimulating interaction with, with your mates, with your team. You are, you're, you're busy, you're, 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 you're working with a goal, so you're not really focused on what you're doing physically, but yet you're moving a lot. And moving is uh, super important to keep a healthy mind. And you know this, healthy mind, healthy body. Uh, yes, movement is super important. If you don't play sports, I'm the kind of person who despises sports and I'm horrible at it. I've always been. My father used to pay me to do laps at the, in the pool because I, I, you know, I didn't like it. I didn't like swimming. And my dad wanted me to do sports, but I like money. I always, since I was little. So he would give me $5 per lap and I'll never forget that. And then we used to go and learn tennis uh, I was a little, I was a teenager then, and the, the tennis, uh, the tennis uh, coach uh, was very cute. Was, and I was like 15, 16 years old. So I would go because the guy was cute. So that was my motivation. But uh, at least I was there and I was doing something. Now, I've always loved dancing. I'm not very good at it either, but I enjoy it. I enjoy music. I like musical theater. So that's my outlet. That's what I would do. Um, what I am trying to say is that don't force anything. Try to make it fun. Find out what your kids like to do. And if they don't like to do anything, that's not okay. You pick something. Pick something that's very easy, that is not challenging, and it's like a game. So create a game of, you, you can do like, uh, you know, the chairs. Well, I don't know what it's called in English, but there's a, there's a game that you're dancing around, and then you sit in a chair, and then you take a chair out. Probably if you're alone at home with your family and you're only a family of three or four, uh, that's not, maybe you can't really play the, the chairs game, but figure something out, play songs that they like. Everybody has a song that they like. You can find something to do. Singing and dancing uh, are two extremely healing activities. And I use the word healing. It heals you. It heals your mind. It heals your soul. And it wakes up your body. Um, if you have aches, if you have a lot of things that happen to us are because of atrophy. And if you stand still in one place or if you're sitting at a computer a lot, and now children are doing that a lot, 
they are constantly in their iPads and their computers and playing games and doing all kinds of things with a computer, things for school and things for fun. You already know this. I'm not telling you anything new, um, but try it. If, if your child is depressed, anxious, or stressed, the first thing you do, you play some music, get them out of that computer, and start dancing. And he probably, they probably won't do it the first song, maybe not the second song, but you know, you know, you know what they say, if you can't beat them, join them, you keep going, mom or dad, and at some point they'll join you. Okay, next one. I just, I really want to emphasize physical activity is very important because the next ones, they don't use so much physical activity, uh, but they're also very good. The next one is, it's called guided imagery. I just, I just learned that this had a name. I've been doing this my entire life. It's so funny how people put things into uh, compartments. Uh, but yeah, so what, what, that, what that really is, it's, it's about daydreaming. It's about imagination. It's about picturing things in your mind's eye. And we do that a lot with my meditations. I specialize in guided meditations, and that's what I do. I do a lot of um, imagery, guided imagery. So uh, you don't need me, but you can have me. I have lots of resources in YouTube for this, and there's a million other people who do the same, and you can find it or don't. What this, what this is about really is for you to go within, close your eyes, and imagine beautiful and wonderful things. And when we do that, we awaken the mind, we awaken the spirit, uh, we tap into a different part of ourselves that is not constantly, consistently um, focused on the truth, the facts, what's happening outside of us. And this is really powerful to do, especially at this time, and if you are in an apartment, and if you can go out, if you can go on vacation or whatever, whatever, uh, this is a great escape. And, uh, and the mind, I mean, there's been studies, um, I can give you more to look at and more resources, but we know that the mind doesn't distinguish what's real from what's not. If you are really present in your thoughts and in your imagery, you, your mind will believe it. And what that means is that if you truly immerse yourself in a beautiful, uplifting, happy place, guess what? You are going to automatically be in a much happier and uplifted mood. It's worth the chat. It's worth to try. And the third fix, also very easy, useful, and important, is breathing. We breathe all the time, obviously, <laughs> never stops. This is something that we do constantly, every day, every second, every minute. Um, this is a fantastic tool that we already have. Our bodies are intelligent, our bodies are perfect and wise, and our bodies know what to do for us. We are self-healing, you know this. So I invite you to try this next time your kid or your spouse is cranky or angry, upset, um, stress, really ticked off. I invite you to tell them to sit down with you and breathe with you. Make this into a game. And the way you're gonna do it is you take three seconds to inhale and about three seconds as well to exhale. What I like to do when I do this exercise is I like to also imagine as I am inhaling, I imagine that I am bringing in beauty, happiness, wealth, awesomeness, all the wonderful things that I want to have in my life. I'm receiving it, I'm bringing them in. I am inhaling it. I am inhaling success, triumph, beauty, happiness, wealth. That's what I would say. If you were a seven-year-old, maybe you inhale winning the tournament, 
acing every test this year that you have, um, making new friends, feeling happy, feeling elated, being cool. And every time I exhale, I imagine and I have the intention to let go, take out all the garbage. Anything that I don't like and doesn't serve me, and it could even include events and people and things. Also, it includes, obviously, feelings. So if you're feeling angry or sad or worried or agitated or bored, you let that out. So take the boredom out, take the annoyance out, the irritation out, the scarcity out, the inadequacy out, the shyness out, anything that you don't like in your life is getting kicked out of yourself, out of your system, out of your body, and out of your life. Now remember, the goal of this exercise is to breathe deeply. So you just breathe. And you can just use a word and breathe in beauty and breathe out ugliness. Breathe in peace, breathe out chaos. Breathe in success, breathe out poverty, etc. I hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching. I have more tips for you. Uh, click on the description below and also um, my article that I wrote. I have a, a three extra bonuses for you. And if you have any questions or comments, I always welcome them. Don't be shy, reach out. Uh, you can find me at veronicamoya.com. And I wish you a very happy rest of the year. All my love.